2020 marked the 30th anniversary of the original Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles movie. It also marked a time when we all found ourselves locked in our homes, searching for things to do and ways to stay creative and connected. And I started watching the trend on YouTube where different cast and crew were coming together and creating reunions that they could share with the fans. It was a way of giving back, it was a way of staying connected, and it was a way of making something beautiful out of a situation that did not feel beautiful at all. And so today I'm going to be looking back at the making of the cast and crew reunion of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. And Aaron was the technical director. He was the person who was behind the scenes and he was pulling all the material together. And he was just such a beautiful collaborator and somebody that we've continued working together. He works with Judith Hoke, Goddess on Fire. He's the technical director here. He has so much expertise and knowledge about things that I don't have. But uh, we're looking back on what it took to bring that together. We had about 14, 15 different people on two continents in five different time zones and pulling it together was was quite a feat and i don't know if you're like me but i really love behind the scenes i love as a creative person and a content creator myself i love knowing how things come together and i know that there's so many of you out there that love to do the same that love to watch the same but that are also creators on your own so today we're going to show you or share with you um what it took for us to bring this together and I hope you love it as much as I do. It was the 30th anniversary of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. We were all locked down. Yeah. There was not going to be any, you know, any plans that anybody had to, to hang out with the fans for that year you know, to celebrate it, um, was gone. And I was watching these reunions happen and feeling like, what a great thing to do for the fans. Yeah. But I didn't, I wasn't sure what direction to head in. And so I reached out to my friend, Fran. She told me what they had done. And then that was right when you got in touch with me and yeah. we started communicating and you knew a lot more of the technical stuff than I did. Yeah. So that was... You know, it's just funny how things work out because you're right, we were all kind of locked away inside of our houses. Oh, trapped. And for, for me, you know, like <laughs> I, as a, a YouTube content creator guy, like marketing person, like when pandemic hit, everything stopped for me. Right. So I went into full, you know, I'm like, I have an entrepreneurial, you know, mindset and I'm just like, I, I want to do stuff. I want to make yeah. cool things. And that's kind of how the whole entire Ninja Turtle thing came to be because I, when I saw that it was the 30th year anniversary, uh, you know, I'm like, this is a great opportunity to be a part of something, but also just to put your, my name out there and kind of just kind of, it's right. just funny how things work, you know, like you send an Instagram direct message and now I'm sitting in your house right? here in and, Nashville, and, Tennessee, and you know, we've, it's like. And we've gotten together, this is our second time. Yeah, we've so, known each other, what, for two and a half years now, two years? Pretty well, well, it was 2020, it's 2022. So it's, it's a little over two years two now. Years. Yeah, yeah, a little over two years, which is crazy, you know. And it's great because we stayed working together. Yeah. Because we pulled this together and then did the yeah. reunion with um, Corey Feldman and Robbie Rist, and yep. then also Ernie the Reyes one with Jr. me and Ernie Reyes Jr., which was really great. Yeah, if you guys haven't uh, seen that one yet, uh, that's my favorite out of the, yeah. the anniversary videos. Yeah. We should you know. do a look back on that one too. Yeah, I'll throw a clip up. So, Aaron, one of the biggest things was having to coordinate. We had, I think it was like 15 people, yeah. something like that. But we were on two different continents. We had five different time zones. We were doing it all by Zoom. We had yeah. to coordinate so many things. And you, how, once it was all together, how many days did you have to edit it, to put it together? 
Yeah, so the, uh, it was crazy. I think it was three days I threw the whole entire edit together. And this is this is after we filmed it. Obviously, we had about a week of planning and we were kind of right. like sorting things out in our head right. on how it was all going to work. And to be completely honest, like I knew from the very beginning, I'm like, this is not going to go to plan. It's going to it's going <laughs> to anybody who's ever done something like this or a YouTube yeah. video, you can relate to me like it never goes the way that you think it's going to go. But that's kind of the best part about it. Well, and I know? had I I'm so used to that. Yeah because it's always like that mm -hmm. i'll get a script and then read it and can think well it might go this way and as soon as you're there on the day it goes completely differently yeah. um one of the things that i loved about it was that because we had so many people this is what they do they were professionals yeah. they knew how to just show up and do it but it was finding everybody yeah was challenging and i mean you did all of that i mean you were sending messages to everybody you i mean you really were i called the, in a lot of favors talk about networking it was crazy oh, and a lot I, of I learned so much from that just from you know on a business relationship level per, personal relationship level like seeing how you dealt with people and were able to kind of bring everybody together and be like hey we're going to do something special yeah. and it's going to be for the right reasons and that i think that's why me and you have always resonated just because yeah. i'm just like well, I, when I see somebody doing something, not, not just for the right reasons, but also because they love it, yeah. I'm just, I get motivated from that. And I really think we kind of like fed off each other's energy. Yeah, it, that the, was, you know. that, that, it was such a collaborative experience. We had other collaborators as well. Um, but this was sort of the relationship that stood the test of time in terms of yeah. like, we've kept collaborating together. Um, it was you know different people brought different things like brian henson yeah. um reconnecting with him was so much fun he's so talented he's um done you know so many things since then but it this was you know he was the second unit director it was really fun i think one of my favorite things about the reunion was hearing some of the stories yeah. like um, hearing Brian's stories behind the scenes. He was the one who brought in Kevin Clash because I didn't yeah. know how to get in touch with Kevin Clash. And I really wanted Kevin Clash there because he was spectacular as Splinter. Um, I Finding David Foreman, yeah. that, was, that was a hard one. I had to dig, 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 dig to finally get David Foreman. Um, and he was in London. Steve Barron, getting Steve. Yeah, it just it, that it, was a big one. It was a room full of professionals, and you could feel it when we were in there. You know, yeah. everybody knew knew what to do. And for me, you know, I'm used to working on lower budget productions, and I'm usually well, work ours was low. Yeah, it was low. I <laughs> mean, it was, it was no no budget. Free. It was it was 100 percent. <laughs> nobody worked for it. Nobody but, made a dime. But the the people that were on there, th that's not normally what they do. But they did yeah. it for the fans as well. Like everybody oh, yeah. kind of just understood in their head, like this is a big deal. I mean the and. You know the turtle fans I've, i'm just shocked by them every day like these yeah. people when we were doing the live i think we had something like almost six thousand people were watching live oh wow just for that video yeah and i mean six thousand yeah. people in a room it was it was really exciting um you know we couldn't get everybody that we wanted mm -hmm. which was hard um uh we elias was unable to join us for the reading, but I, I got him, a, a piece of his day was free so he could come in at the end, but mm -hmm. I screwed that up. That I thought I had sent him the Zoom link so that when he was free, he could check in with us, and I had never sent him the Zoom link. Yeah. <sighs> and I had sent everybody the Zoom link, and it was one of those moments where I realized you had gotten in touch with me and you're like, Elias is in the waiting room. He's coming into the Zoom call and he, yeah. or is Elias coming? There was something where, we had like, some where is Elias? Technical difficulties. Oh. And, and then we had, he came in at the very end. So was that special. was really exciting because he's notoriously shy and he doesn't really do a lot of press stuff. And so getting him was exciting. Um, I really had wanted um, to get our original Danny, Mike Turney, mm. um, but he's really shy too, so he wasn't going to do it. And uh, but fortunately, Zane Pice, Josh Pice's son, mm -hmm. came in, and we got most everybody. 
One of my highlights, though, yeah. was James Sato. Yes. He killed it. I mean, he was so committed, and that part of the reading was super exciting. Sixty-six warehouse, Shredder's night. Tatsu and Shredder address the foot and teams. Money cannot buy the honor which you have earned tonight. You make us all proud. Only effort, discipline, loyalty. Earn the right to wear the dragon door. You are here because the outside world rejects you. This is your family. I am your father. I want you all to become full members of the foot. There is a new enemy. Freaks of nature who interfere with our business. You are my eyes and ears. Find them. Together, we will punish these creatures. These turtles. <laughs> <laughs> master, 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 I, I, uh, <laughs> dot, dot, dot. <laughs> it, it, it was awesome to, from my perspective, because, you know, I'm, I'm sitting back behind the scenes during this whole entire thing, and I'm kind of monitoring right. everybody, right. making sure that we're, we're on, on track, you know, kind of being floor director a little bit. And right. the moment he starts talking, when you see everyone else's eyes light up, all of a sudden, everyone that is an actor or is a part of the business, they all kind of like leaned into I this. Know. It's like this feeling that he gave off and it was, re it was really special, you know. There's what, for me, like sometimes when actors get together and they do table reads, there's a habit of laying way back yeah. and not doing anything mm -hmm. and and that can kind of go in two different ways one is if you're very exploratory you're just waiting to see what is going to happen yeah some are not doing anything because they don't want to be judged and they don't want to because sometimes in table reads there's a lot of voices and right. personalities there and they're and it's a protective measure and then there are the actors there's so much fun they just go for it yeah it they're not they don't care it's they're there to play and he brought his play there um that was just so much fun and you know who else was really for me a huge highlight was michel and sisti yeah he was so funny which speaking of that is you know what was really cool is that we got all these original voice actors which you know these guys weren't a, a part of the the movie, you know. They got dubbed over, so for, to have them come in there and like these guys that didn't get the recognition in the original film, and now we're showing what well, it would have sounded like. You and know. and I'm I'm pretty sure I could be wrong, but they Josh Pice was the only one he voiced yeah. Raphael, but the original intent had been to have them all voice. I don't know if David Foreman would have done it because he had a British accent. Mm -hmm. um, and they might have dubbed him. But uh, the, I know that the, the, you know, the actors in the suits were pretty surprised when they found out that they yeah. weren't doing the voices. And I, I was shocked because nobody told me. But then, you know, the movie wasn't edited by Steve Barron. Yeah. It was edited, you know, he, he didn't have, obviously movies have editors, but yeah. he um, was let go of, uh, which I think was a real tragedy for the film. You know, a lot of us, that's why, you know, we never continued on. I was gone, Steve was gone, you know, there were other people who were gone. Um, it was really exciting though to have John Duprez yeah. come in 
and it, it was and hear his music and hear his stories. I mean, he's he's le- right. what, like you were reading to me today all the things that John DePres has yeah, done. Yeah, and he has a hu- he has an extensive catalog of movies that he's helped do the soundtracks for. Yeah, you know, he, he's a he was a true professional. You know, a funny stories when we were in the reunion. Yeah, you know, I'm. I'm like, oh, uh, you know, YouTube does copyright strikes on the music. Right. And uh, do we have permission to use it? And I'm like, you know, because I'm, I'm like, I'm all over the place. I'm like, is right. everyone good? Are the time right. good? Are we going to make sure the edits are right? Is this how it's going to be? And right. then he's like, dude, I made the... This, I'm good. I, I, I'm you good. have my permission. You have my permission to use my music. Right. And I was just like, oh. I just loved any behind the scenes stuff that I didn't know about. Mm-hmm. It was really exciting. What yeah. were some of your favorite parts? I, th- I think my favorite part was being able to sit there and really take in the moment and just l- look at these people that are true professionals and they have a legacy of a career, including y- yourself, and just being able to, you know, it was, it, it, to me, it was humbling to be able to sit in front of a, a group of people and just be around something like that and just yeah. be a part of that moment. I mean, it, I can't get over it, you know? Yeah, one of the things that was cool about it was um, that so many of us had not been together mm-hmm. since we had shot the film and um, you know and that was in 1989 yeah. it came out in 1990 and so we hadn't seen each other since then and there was such a camaraderie because yeah. it was like a really fun really challenging summer camp yeah you know i think it, i'm trying to remember if it was six or eight weeks it was probably eight weeks with pre-production and it was really really challenging um but i mean the reason that we did that the whole reunion and mm-hmm. you had already spoken to the um the fans is that none of us had any idea that it was going to be as successful as yeah. it was and that at the time, 30 years later, and now we're at 32 years later, yeah. the fans are more devoted than ever. I mean, it's really something about this franchise and this story and these characters that um, that the audience loved. I mean, like yeah. when I do Comic Cons, I have three generations come up. I'll have, you know, mom or dad who are the original Ninja Turtle fans, their kids, mm-hmm. and then their kids' kids. And people, or I, or even young people who love it. I'm always amazed when like a couple of teenagers come over and they're like, "We love this." Yeah, you know, it's I. I think really the movie strikes a chord with people so much because in a way it's kind of like a coming of age movie. You know, it's really is. It's a it's a movie about you know trials and tribulations. I mean, if you actually go think about the the script and at the end of the movie. Like, you know, Spl- Splinter has to come in yeah. and rescue the guys at the end, kind yeah. of, you know? And it, yeah. It, but it's just something about that and just like, you know, having the father figure that, that's in there for the turtles and then also having having this villain that they're having to fight. And yeah. there's a battle that everybody has to fight daily and well, I think that's why people resonate with it so yeah, much. Yeah, it's like the hero's journey. Uh, you know, from an outside perspective, it, seeing it firsthand during the reunion was, mm-hmm. it was, a, pun intended, a shell shock. Like I was yeah. like, I was, you know, just to see how ravenous the fans are. Yeah. And how, like they were, and you know, it's great about the turtle fans. And I've talked to a lot of them when we were doing it and, you know, is that they know exactly what they want and they're not afraid to tell you. Right. And, and, and it, just something about that is like so awesome to me. It's, yeah. and, you it's know, it's pure. just like, it's like Star Wars or, you know, yeah. other genres. It's, it's right up there with, like the fans and the cult, the cult following behind it. I'm stunned. Yeah, the the people who um, who love this movie, who are colleagues or people who obviously who came up behind me, who love it and um, are you know I'm like thrilled to meet them, but they're like more thrilled to meet me, and mm-hmm. I'm I I'm always blown away by it. I because really after. Doing the first one, I kind of walked away, like, okay, well, that was fun, moving on to my career. And I had no idea that it would continue to be this this joy for so many people. I mean, that part for me is an honor. And that's really why I wanted to put the reunion together, but I yeah. could not have done it without you. 
Well, you know, I appreciate it. I could just, not have done it without you. Uh, thank you. I, I, I really just love doing this kind of stuff, you know? Yeah. And any time that I can use what I'm good at to make other people happy, that I'm like all for it. So it was just kind of so like, good. it was just one of those weird moments, you know, to anybody who um, is watching, if you're sitting on Instagram or you're on social media, you know, there's opportunities that are out there, but you have to put the positive energy out into the world and, and think weird things right. collide. If I thought, you know, two and a half years ago, I was going to be sitting here in Nashville right. you know, on your back porch and we're just friends and just having a good time. Like, it's just, you know, it's so funny because this is, you know, you never know who you're going to click with and, right. and what opportunities are out there, but you have to put out positive and, um, totally. and, and really, I think what is important is putting out genuine intention yeah. behind what you're doing is like I, when I because when I contacted you I and I've did this for every single person because when we were building the hype for the right. anniversary and w together right. I was like making sure that every single message that I sent it wasn't just like a spam message I'm like mm -hmm. I went and looked at the account I actually made sure that these people knew that they right. were appreciated and right. I think that's really one of the reasons that we kind of clicked right away you yeah. know it's just like well because we were kind of doing two separate things and then m merged a bit yeah you know and and that was just divine timing I think and um, and it really is I, I think that you're a perfect example of when you have a gift or you have something that you love and you go ahead and you just put yourself out there yeah. and you just pursue it yeah. I mean because I think a lot of people have dreams and they just dream about their dream. You, you there has scared. to be some action yeah. involved in it. And, you know, uh, doing this or doing our reunion mm -hmm. led to other things uh, of, I know for me, just like putting myself out in the world. I'm so used to having a large production around me of, you know, there's a lot of people who are incredibly skilled and lots of money and yep. so it always is you know perfectly shot this i can tell you guys right now we got three ring lights and there's a couple cords it's all yeah. over the place it's just us having a good conversation and it's not about right. making sure that we're doing it the best it's just about putting it out there so that we can make some other people happy they right. can listen and watch and you know enjoy their afternoon right and also it's now that we're at the 32nd year mm -hmm. Um, it's nice to just kind of have a look back and go, oh, we made that. That's how we got together. Let's go back and look at that again. Because yeah. it really was special. And, you know, what I had hoped would come out of it was um, letting people know, like, what went into the making of each individual turtle, that it wasn't. Yeah. One individual, it was several. It was the guy in the suit, it was the puppeteer, it was the voice actor and the stuntman. Yeah. And so I really wanted to kind of capture all of that. And we got really close. We still haven't gotten the puppeteers. Puppeteers, we want you. Where we you at? want yeah, to just sort of yeah, to just show the whole story. And that's, you know, for me in working with NECA. Um, cause I, I, you know, have, they am now have a relationship with them and they've made a figure and now we have the second figure coming out with April and Casey at the farmhouse, which yeah. is really exciting. Right. Um, but I loved how the fans have been, cause you helped me with that when we did April and April last year mm -hmm. with NECA, we did extended version sort of episodes of April and April and, and 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 so that you know we need to go down that little rabbit hole a little more yeah. i think and do some stuff with NECA. i know it's there's there's only so much time we, we got a we lot have to so do, many ideas and so little time leave a comment below let us know what we should do I'm, yeah I'm, exactly I'm, I'm, i got ideas rolling all the time so you i know, know he does he does